Hey, this is Trevor at Stone Death, and during this video, I will be reviewing Palms of Sorrowed Kings by Obsequier. Okay, so for the unfamiliar folks out there, uh, this band is from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and they actually got their start back in the late 90s under the name uh, Tumnal Winds. In 2007, they reformed under the name of Zequier, and since then have put out three full-length albums. The style that they play is kind of a special twist on a genre that I could only, I could only label as uh, medieval black metal. And regardless of what I tell you during this review, you should check it out for yourself to form an opinion, because I think that you'll agree almost right away when you hear it. And I'm going to dig into it for you, uh, myself, right after I take a big dab. Just going to make a little scoop. Then we start the fire. Make sure to stir the pot while it boils. And now we're stoned. <sighs> okay, into the album. Palms of Sorrow Kings by Obsequia was released last year in November by 20 Bucks Spin. And there's a shit ton of things about it that I could talk about because I think it's great, it's awesome, I love listening to it, and I have a whole bunch of fucking notes. But I've broken it down into just a few really key things I think are probably most important for you to hear if I'm gonna, you know, talk you into listening to it. The first of those things is pretty obviously the first thing that you would notice about the album if your eyes work, and that would be the excellent cover art here. I check that out the front and the back because they're both just excellent. Fuck it. I don't know a whole lot about uh, this particular image here, but this one, uh, when I shared the album and its cover, obviously, on my Facebook page, uh, Stone Death, a while ago. I actually got somebody that hit me up and said that they used to live uh, just a few miles away from this castle. They said, I think they said that it was in Wales, and they sent me a picture of the, the landscape uh, that exists actually where this castle is. And there's there's some of the stuff that's fudged, like uh, this, this ledge here. I don't think that exists there. And, and some of the scenery, but... I mean, you could trace the line in the background of this this uh, horizon of the mountains here is exactly the same as the picture he sent. So that was that was pretty cool to kind of know where that is in real life. So as you could see, the album cover really helps keep it in theme with the uh, castle metal or the uh, medieval aesthetic that this black metal album has. And obviously there are many black metal tracks on the album because it is a black metal album from a black metal band but uh what you'll notice is that there's a lot of interludes almost every other song which you, you know would seem tedious but it actually is a nice bit of breathing room between the tracks almost like a, a palate cleanser but the really interesting thing and this is the second key point i wanted to make about the album is that each of these songs is technically a cover, and when I when I say cover, I don't mean of, of you know some band that you heard already, but I mean I looked up the tracks because I, I wanted to translate the names because none of them are in English for any of these interludes, and instead of finding a translation, I didn't. Uh, what I found is that they are covers of songs all written by 13th to 14th century troubadours. Uh, for you D and D folks, that's a uh, bard. But they're all authentic, you know, medieval pieces of music with authentic instruments that are, you know, uh, correct to the period, I guess, that uh, they would have been played in. All that sound big and, you know, echoey like they were played in a chamber. Of course, you know, there's little changes here and there, like they added some tracks of a, uh, a little stream or some tripping birds or, you know, changed the tempo here and there or whatever, but... Um, you know, that just goes to show that it, it's, it's a little bit more than just a, a, an aesthetic or as some people might call it the castle metal, a gimmick. It's, 
it's not so much just about how it looks or how it sounds, but it, it proves that there's actually a real interest in the material and where it comes from and how it's done authentically, I think. And, uh, well, that's fucking neat, okay? As for the non-interlude tracks or the real meat and potatoes of the album, um, it's very non-typical of black metal, of course. It's uh, non-traditional, uh, very much so, because... It's uh, all the melodies are very heroic and all the guitar tones are very bright and shiny and, you know, everything's everything's blissful and the, all the samples in the background are of birds chirping and, and streams babbling. Like I said before, you know, with the uh, with the interludes, it's it's um, it's a very springtime album, I guess, which is a little bit in contrast to the album before it, which was maybe just a little bit darker, you know, kind of a stormy weather as opposed to blue skies and sunshine. It's also pretty impossible to miss that there are three distinguishable guitar parts on this album, two leads and then the rhythm, as well as the bass. But the, the two leads, they're harmonizing near constantly with each other. Like, like they're in, like they're in combat almost like two nights, like good and evil all the time. I mean, between all the, the riff melodies and, and the, the solos, it's just fantastic. And you might think that these two really big, bright, shiny guitar tones battling it out against each other the whole time might drown out, like, the rhythm or the bass or the drums or anything, really, but the mix is really fucking perfect. I mean, you can hear every single bit of it. Everything has its own elbow room, you know, in there, so there's no, there's no fighting for space. It's just, it's fantastic. I say that a lot, I feel like, this this review. Maybe I've said it too many times. I don't know. Somebody count for me. My last note is actually not so much to do with the music as it is with the band itself, but uh, for Palms of Sorrow Kings, Obsequie didn't receive a single royalty check. Not a fucking cent. All the money instead went to Doctors Without Borders, which is, uh, to put it simply, an organization that kind of acts as a global emergency response unit, I guess. I, I don't know. You can Google it yourself if you want to find a little bit more information about that. But I just thought that was cool and worth bringing up that they didn't really take any money for this album. It all went out to a charity foundation, you know, thing. So, uh, you know, good karma. And so whether your conscience just needs a boost or you're really just in need of those sweet riffs right off the round table, I highly suggest you pick up this album. Go get one. I will put a link down below where you can get it from 20 bucks spin. Okay, so I'm finished reviewing the album. And uh, now I have a couple of other albums uh, in a similar vein that I would like to shout out to you guys. For you to also check out without going into too much length, of course. The first is Hearts of No Light by Shamish that was released in 2019 by Prosthetic Records. This album has the heart of a traditional black metal album, but it's it's been mutated by wild and avant-garde experimentations. There's lots of little surprises tucked away in here, and it's it's probably going to knock your socks off. Loads of fun. Check it out. The second is Cairn by Mismore that came out also in 2019 on Gilead Media. This album is one of my favorites from last year. Uh, it's very, very much doom metal infused black metal, um, but it's also very uh, deep and personal and meaningful to the artist who wrote it. And whether you take that uh, aspect into uh, in, into consideration or not while listening to it, it's it's great. It's fantastic. It's got a lot of cool shit going on, and you should check it out. Yeah. 
So that's it. You've heard my review. You've heard my album shout outs. And that's the end of this video. There will be links to all that shit down below in the description where you can listen and or purchase any said materials. Come back next time.